Like other families, when we were first admitted to the NICU, we had so many questions. We wanted to know, when do you think we'll get discharged? What are the criteria for getting discharged? Will our baby have to meet a certain age or weight in order to be discharged? And would she need to be discharged with oxygen or a feeding tube? Discharge was always being discussed by our nurses and our baby's care team. It was always the goal that we were working towards achieving. We learned the skills that preterm baby needs before going home from the NICU would be breathing on their own, unassisted, temperature control, and getting enough nutrition through feeding. Prior to discharge, we learned that Ellie needed to show that she could gain weight while getting adequate nutrition. We learned that premature babies can do this with breastfeeding, bottle feeding, or in our case, Ellie was sent home with a feeding tube. Before discharge, babies need to be spell-free for a few days. An apnea spell happens when the baby's oxygen level drops quickly, and a bradycardia spell happens when the baby's heart rate drops quickly. These can happen separately or at the same time, and spells can be scary. Similar to other babies, Ava did have spells. It was actually the main reason why she ended up extending her stay um, beyond um, kind of what we expected. And so when we first learned about spells, obviously it was very concerning. We would hear all these alarms. Uh, we'd worry that there was something wrong with her, that you know, it was something that we did, maybe how we held her. After speaking to all the doctors and the nurses, they explained to us clearly why it was happening. We were told that these spells are to be expected with any premature baby and they will outgrow them over time, which is the case with Ellie. From the beginning on day one, we were taught how to identify the spells and how to do things like rubbing Ellie's back to bring her out of a spell. Once Ellie was no longer on a spell count, the care team felt she was stable enough to go home. Like most premature babies, Ellie wasn't able to keep her own body temperature in the beginning. Ellie was in an isolate to help her control her temperature. As she got bigger, gained weight, she was able to keep her own body temperature without an isolate. So she graduated to an open crib. When Giovanni transitioned to the crib from the isolate, for, for us it's like a, a big moment. They're like, oh, Max and Georgina, come over here, I'm gonna show you something. And bam, I see Giovanni in the crib. <laughs> like. I was so happy, I was so happy. Yeah, it was very, very heartfelt, heartwarming, because he was just in that open crib, um, like a, just like a normal baby. We were very happy. Maya learned how to feed uh, by mouth before going home, very early into the process. Even before she started feeding by mouth, we started introducing a pacifier to get her used to the sucking motion. And around 32 weeks, they started introducing her to the bottle. So these were all really good ways to get her used to the suck, swallow and breathe technique that she had to master before going home. The car seat test was done right before Ellie was discharged home. We brought in Ellie's car seat and a nurse put her in it and washed it for 90 minutes to make sure she didn't have a spell. The night before discharge, Miller had her car seat test in which she had to pass in order to be discharged home. In this, she was put in her car seat for a period of time and her oxygen levels were monitored to make sure that in that position, she was able to maintain her breathing. Once we brought Ellie home, we had made sure that she's wearing warm enough outfits. We were told that she would wear one more layer than we were wearing. We basically made sure that she feels warm enough at all times. So one thing I always tell folks is that, as with all the other parents that are going through this um, in the NICU, everyone is just learning as they are dealing with it. So very much a lot of it's just, um, you know, being as flexible as possible, being there for your kid, um, and also just asking questions when you, you know, you need help. To always know that there are folks, doctors, nurses, family, friends, they're here to support you. This is a new experience for every single NICU parent. So just know that you know, your community is there to help you.